Hello and welcome. Johannes Bechberger will tell uh, us a bit about open source Java profilers and um, he likes he likes baking, cooking, riding the bike and open source developing, uh, developing. and I wish you much enjoyment. the wrong title I just found out that's the single thing I missed so that's yes I'm talking you uh, I talk about uh, unleash the power of <laughs> unleash the power of systems that break no it's cool. uh, so yes without further ado please turn down the light so originally I wanted to talk to you about this topic <laughs> Nightmares of a Profile Developer, Johannes Bechberger's Nightmarish Tales on Java Profiling APIs. But it turned out I didn't want to be that gloomy, so we started with an introduction example. Um, it, I'm, you all probably know that the situation when you're in, um, when, when you're the, like a student's union or somewhere else, where they ask you, aren't you a Java developer? And I said like, yeah, I can do some Java. and you do also some web development and I'm like, yeah, and that's how it happened to me in the Night of Sciences, which is like in November this year that they asked me, hey, couldn't we have a, um, a web app where people could just answer questions? And I was like, cool, uh, I could do this. It's just th so people can answer like how questions like how old is the universe during the Night of Sciences, which is like, a little bit like the Gulasch Programmiernacht, but fairly smaller, where like uh, professors can um, uh, tell people about their topics in short talks. Uh, and we wanted to be JDPR compliant, so we didn't want to use any large platform like Google Forms because, yeah, it's a nightmare. And so I just wrote a simple application. Um, it has a client, it has an admin interface, it has also a server, and I thought like, hey, the server could just store every every information in a JSON file. So how it works is that the client asks the server regularly, hey, do you have a question? If yes, cool, um, I present it to the user. If not, then no. And I thought, yeah, using a database is totally overkill because Stalknuth said premature optimization is the root of all evil, yay. The problem was the event came and any guesses what happened with this tiny little application and 90 users coming to the website. Any guesses? Fail. Yes, it failed, of course, it failed miserably. And you know probably the feeling when you're on a laptop at an event, hacking down, restarting the server and trying to hotfix things and it doesn't work and it breaks and you're like, no, what have I done the last 10 years? What have I learned in my studies? Um, because I missed the whole quote of Donald Kruf, um, and many other people also do. He wrote, we should forget about the small efficiencies in about 97% of the time. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. And he, further and he further told us, yet we should not pass up our critical, our opportunities in the critical 3%. A good programmer will not be lulled into complacency by such reasoning. He will be wise to look carefully at the critical code, but only after that code had been identified. So how do we do this? Profiles to the rescue. When I ask people on the street and ask them, hey, and they, they ask me like, what are you doing at work? I'm like, I develop profiles. And they're like, I'm profiles, people like uh, Sherlock Holmes. and who will look into crime scenes or like uh, Detective Heinrich uh, for the people that grew up in Karlsruhe and remember this, this folk from the university film course who, who looks into such mysterious things that where all the AKK cups are at. Um, and so essentially what they look, they look at crime scenes and look how to solve them and essentially that's what we're doing here too with profilers. So consider on the top um, a pseudocode version of my application and below a flamecraft that builds up. So flamecraft helps you to um, 
know how much a method is, how many times a method is called, or how much time it takes, compared to the uh, caller methods. So for example here, the main method takes all the time, of course, because it's the main method. With no surprise, it has a server loop because it's a jet, because it's a question server. And the server loop um, calls the method handle question request, because yeah, it works by just looping over all requests that it gets in, handles the question request, and as Client requests are much more likely than admin requests. Most of the time is like dominated by this method. But of course, there are also other methods and they take some time. And then how does send question request work? Ta-da! It's just asking, is the current question enabled? If yes, emit the current question. If not, emit something else and then value. And any guesses what these both what both these methods are taking most of the time in computing or doing? Any guesses here? Yes. What? Yeah, essentially this. They, they parsed JSON and that's, that was great. That's good revelation. And to, to quote Mario Fusco, I love frame graphs. When you do something really stupid, it punches you in your face and you cannot not see it. And so replacing all the parsing JSON with a proper database, in this case SQLite, because Overall, using something like MariaDB would be really over-engineering, but SQLite is nice, it's small, you can use it easily, and it worked. And the problem is, I developed this application during Corona, so for Corona-based event, and now Corona is over, so I can never use this application. <laughs> but, but again, um, maybe some other pandemic comes around. So what, what you see here, um, profiling is a good part of your toolbox of methodologies. It's like debugging, it's like testing, and so on. So you should just put it in and then when you have a performance problem you can look, hey I know some profile and look at that. So who I am? I'm Johannes Bechberg. I'm sometimes talking about profilers there in London. I work at the Submachine team. We have stickers for later if you want one. Um, it's a team at SAP um, with around 15 people where we work on uh, OpenJDK and I work specifically on profiles, work on profile fronts and profiles themselves and also profiling APIs. And that's one of the reasons why I'm standing in front of you because and why I wanted to initially Name this this talk um, Tales of a Johannes Bechberger's Tales of a Profiler API Developer, because I know a lot of profiling APIs. I, I worked on them, and so um, what is profile actually? And I think the the question um, had been asked in the beginning. Um, and to quote the new Hacker's Dictionary, um, it tells us that a profile, so the thing that we obtain by a profile, is essentially um, a list of methods with the runtime so we can tune away the hotspots in it. And that's quite cool. Um, they have, of course, different profiles, and they have advantages and disadvantages. And that's the first lesson of, hey, why you shouldn't trust a profile, for example, an instrumenting profiler. How an instrumenting profile essentially works is that it inserts instructions automatically at runtime in your code. For example, here we have our server loop, and it works by inserting at the beginning, hey, we're starting with the server loop method. At the end, we're exiting this method. And that's quite nice. It, it works properly. It's easy to understand. The main problem is JITs don't like it, and inline doesn't like it. Essentially, you, you're not measuring the system that you actually want to measure about a different system. So people came up with a different idea. It's the sampling profile. So the idea is here that we only sample like what the JV, what what the application is doing. For example, we ask the JVM regularly, "Hey, what's this application doing around?" And that's pretty cool. It's approximate, but it's usually fine because we only want to need, we only care about like the hotspots in the application, and we don't disturb your application because we're not actually modifying any code here. And of course, before I can tell you the bad parts of profiling, I want to tell you like what the profile is. And for this, it's most important to really know how to write a profile because in the beginning I also thought like profiles are rocket science. They are these large complicated systems and then um, with some preconditions I wrote a profile. I wrote a blog about it here. Um, and it got on Hacker News, and people liked it, so I'm giving talks on this. Um, so essentially how my profile works, it's a Java agent, you attach it at runtime at your application, and it consists of a main class, of course, and this starts the profile, and this profiler, as a sampling profiler, just 
asks the JVM, hey, what's you, what are you doing? Or like the stack traces, and then sleeps, and then samples and sleeps and does it in a row, and then restore it in, in some kind of store class. And so to start with the main method, um, the, the main class, uh, what we essentially do is that we attach it at um, at the start of the of of the application run uh, via minus Java agent, and that's quite cool. And then we can pass some arguments. The question is now, how do we create such an entry method? Because we could, of course, we have different main methods. Like we have the main method here that's for normal applications. Java is a bit weird because this is also valid Java because yay C. Uh, and in JK21, which is upcoming, you can also write this, but this really doesn't cut it. So um, what we um, have here are two different methods. Because we can attach um, a profiler at the beginning, like perhaps, as you see above, but we can also attach it later. So we can only profile an application like after 10 minutes because we think like all the setup code doesn't matter anyway. And for when we attach it later, um, the method agent main is called. When we attach it at the beginning, the method pre main is called. And so the main class is, is pretty simple. It's, it's the, the, it just starts a new profile. It has to create a new thread for this profile, and then it starts it. What's really important, please give your threads names, and please give everything that can be given a name, like class laws, give it a name. It makes profile, it makes debugging so much easier. Um, and yeah, then that's the profiler. That's pretty simple. The only thing that you have to care about is like, yeah, we want to print the profile at the end using the add countdown hook. And then the profiling is just this. We, we asked the JVM for all stack traces, we store them, and yay, that's the profiler. Um, and then uh, what is in these stack traces? What, what are contained? And essentially, there's a bunch of information on the frame. Um, on, uh, that's essentially a method call. It tells us where in the method we're currently in, like the line number, where this class, the method is defined in lies, in which file, and also a method name, and also a class name. And so, we then store it in a store, and that's also not too hard. We have a store with some methods, but essentially the, the most important part is here, how do we come from all these stack traces that we collected? That, um, here, for example, these are when we overlaid over the Flamecraft, when we collected all them, how do we get to this Flamecraft? Because a Flamecraft is a pretty simple visualization. Um, so we just pick one out. So we know that at some point in the application there was a call from main, then server loop, then handle, then current question, and pass JSON. So this is what the JVM is currently executing. So we take this and we think, hey, couldn't we just make a note and make a tree uh, data structure because computer scientists love trees. So what we do is we start with a main node here on the bottom and we say, oh, we found this main node once, that's cool. Um, we also know that like um, the main method calls the server loop, cool, because it has currently. Um, we also know that it's the hand regression request and so on. And that's the first one. Then we get another one because again, we sample and we again hit this. We add the two and then we record, hey, uh, I saw the main method, yay. Now we call it twice, and I saw that again server loop was called and so on, so we mark it down. And now we have a different one um, that's missing all the pass JSON on top, so essentially we're doing the same, but now pass JSON doesn't get a three because we didn't call it. In more interesting here, we're having a new branch, and this just means we're adding a new branch here, there too. And the cool thing is we can turn this quite easily into flame graphs, uh, and so we now um, we have at most four time slots, uh, and then main method takes four time slots, server loop, and question request, and count question takes just three time loops, uh, time time uh, units, and this question enable just one and pass JSON above. So that's essentially what flame graphs are, and then we use some magic called the three flame graph and get some. Um, get some flame graphs. And that's the cool thing. Profiles are pretty simple. You can write your own. I even talked at Milan with someone who said after I gave this talk, hey, I, I want to use this in production. Like, I want to use this in our system because we can't attach a profiler, but 
I can essentially copy your code into my application um, and we can then run it. I don't know, it's a prototype, but you can play around with it. But that's, of course, not reality. In reality, we have different sampling profiles um, because, yes, we have instrumentation based profiles, but they are rubbish, as I told you before. Like, they are. They, they're not profiling the thing that you want to profile, your application. So essentially what we have here, we have external sampling profiles and built-in. Built-in are like directly built into your JVM. And then um, we have on the one hand Visual VM and NetBeans, um, which is like the, the older ones. And then we have, um, then uh, our, uh, Sun decided to create a for to analyze in 19, uh, in 92, which is essentially a, a profiling tool for many languages in the Sun ecosystem then. And then they added the library. Uh, then they added a library function called async get call trace in like 2002 at the end and remove this three months later and of course this is the uh, API that everyone depends on uh, especially like async profile and they tell you later why this is a bad idea um, and there's of course built-in ones uh, called uh, JK flash recorder uh, which works similar ish to to the to to um, async profiler and they sure and they share some code in turn tell ways working and essentially all the modern profilers that you can buy are a mixture of like JFR and async profile. Um, so how do you obtain a profile? Um, uh, bear with me, I'm coming to a juicy bit soon. Um, just so you know how to use it, you come at least away with something from my talk. You can just attach it. It's just a Java agent. It's a, a native agent, so you can just tell the JVM like minus agent path, please start it, and please also print a flying path, and that's okay. Um, with JDK Fly Recorder, that's not that dissimilar. It's built in, so we can just tell the JVM, hey, please do it. But should you trust them? And that's probably the, the reason why you came here. Um, and I think no. So um, it's a nightmare. I stared down the, the abyss, and I'm here, one of the survivors, to tell you. So it's it's really horrible. It's like, don't, don't trust your profilers. They are just tools. Don't trust them. Because for once, we have safe points. And modern profiles don't suffer it, but some of them do, like Visual VM. So the problem is, some profiles um, only profile at safe points. A safe point means that at different parts of the of a program's execution, a thread asks, hey, should I go into a safe point? And if yes, it stops, and all threads stops, and that's cool because then um, we are in a defined state. We have less concurrency. The JVM can do things like garbage collection more properly, and that's a cool thing. And it's really safe and everything. The main problem is it just happens at like some points in the program, and they aren't that many, especially if you have large loops inlining and such. It can take quite a while to get there, so that's not a trait. To have a visualization, I take here the sub JVA, the, the submachine logo, and every time it gets it gets bold and dark, it's it checks for a save point. So essentially, what we're doing here when we're using save points and want to like profile, we we're telling the JVM like, hey, please, please, please stop when we're ready, and then we wait, and at some point in the future it comes to a point. But then when we're going asynchronously, what we eventually want is we're asking. JVM just stop and it stops and that's quite fine. It's even more important when you have multiple threads and some of the applications that we typically write have multiple threads. Um, because then we, when we only want to get the stack trace of thread one, we have to wait till all threads are at the save point, which is quite nasty. Uh, and when we're fully asynchronous, we can just tell the thread one stop and the other thread doesn't care. Um, and now there there is some different APIs, but one but one of the most used APIs that doesn't have the safe point bias is async get stack trace. In a nutshell, it's essentially you have your stack um, on on your operating system that has some some Java methods on it, some C plus plus method on it, and it's essentially turns and essentially reads your stack and returns you the values. But any guesses how many tests are there in the OpenJDK for this API? Any guesses? Any numbers? It's, it's well used. It's like used by, by large companies and 
yes, it's kind of not really in there, but it's still, you can access it with DLSIM, but it's, it's widely used. Any guesses, any numbers? No, that's too pessimistic. That's too optimistic. Who wouldn't test their application so much? Yes, one, that's a good one. Yes, who? Uh, yes, uh, and is it a good one? No. Yes, it isn't a good one. Thanks. Uh, you are so brilliant. The most brilliant audience that I had today. Um, it's my only talk today now. Um, so essentially what this, um, what this test does, um, and in a nutshell, it, it asks in the main method, hey, if dollar check, uh, if, if, uh, if exclamation mark check, then please, re then please throw, and it doesn't work, so, so, uh, and it fails. So essentially it boils down to the check method, and of course, what did the check method test for? Only that the check method is called, but not that all the methods are called, uh, that not that all the above methods are called. So take profiles below with a grain of salt, and for example, in this example that I show you, uh, it's it's not really complete because the JVM um, also uses a JDREC framework which, use, which uses some reflections. So the actual test that we were running before um, is like this. So the main um, so so uh, the main method gets access to a method test in the via reflection and then calls this method test. The method test essentially calls the Java loop method that just loops around um, and. What we wanted to see in the flame graph would be, hey, on the bottom there's the main method, then some reflection stuff, and then the test method, and then travel loop method. Any guesses what we actually got um, before, I test, uh, before I fix the bug? Uh, no, that's, no that's, that's not right. But so essentially what we got is just the um, first three frames, and that's horrible, but our test in the OpenJK before I fix it, just tested for the first frame up there, like for the for the Java loop method, and this is horrible because like this bug was in for three years because it came in because there were some changes in another part of the JVM and that caused this change to happen. And that's not great. And the problem is like your the, the your applications that you write daily they aren't. Tested, ed, tested as well as you want them to be, and that's the same with profilers. Um, but but surely the people from IBM are doing it better. So, any guesses how many tests OpenJ9 has for their implementation? Two. No, zero. Of course, because like couldn't be better, couldn't it? But um, yeah, that's 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 nice. And the IBM people implement it, but they're currently contemplating whether just removing it because there are other nightmare things about it. Um, and there's the synchronous version, so at save points. And there, the the, the answer to is ready. Yes, that's correct. So you see, um, profiling APIs are pretty pretty good tested. And of course, as I told you before, like save point bias is bad. That's a problem. And profiles are really just software. Don't treat them differently. Don't treat all the tools you get differently. Don't treat compilers differently. Don't treat IDEs differently. They are just simple software. So what, what should be better? Like tests should be better. Performance and accuracy could be better because there are some problems in this area. They could be safer, they shouldn't cause segmentation faults, and there are currently some problems, especially because like what async get call trace currently returns are J method IDs. And they are pretty bad because there are there are there is no way to see whether a J method ID is still valid, because when a class, classes can be unloaded in Java, um, isn't there anymore, and you access it, then you can crash, and that's not that great. Um, and it's not designed with safety in mind. So um, I once uh, wanted. So I worked. I started working last year at the OpenJDK team at, at SAP, and I wanted to just wrap the whole API of async get call trace in an old threat crash protection. So it protects us against any um, any crashes. And I then wrote it in a pull request, and then I got an answer like, "Hey." Um, from someone called Marcus Kronlund, who is quite big in this community, I should add that the crash protection mechanism was mainly put in place as a result of having to deliver JFR from JRocket into Hotspot under deadline, upholding feature parity. The stack working code was in barely bad shape back then. And I would add, 
the bad shape didn't change through the ages. And uh, David Holmes, another person in, active in the community, also wrote, like, I think that stack trace is a legacy me mechanism that was created for one single unsupported purpose. And it's, like, used by everyone. And that's cool, isn't it? So um, you know the term test driven development? Ta-da. I've even wrote it down so you can remember it if you haven't heard about it. But I'll dislike test driven development. What I, what I rather like is RDD, it's called rage driven development. So I'm so enraged by all this bad quality. So yes, there are some, some constraints there, but I'm enraged by the missing test. So I want to crash all these bugs, all these moths, and really, really crash them down. And so it's rage driven development. I'm currently working on a new um, profiling API called async get stack trace that has tests a lot of them, and that is probably specified, that's supported, because I di really dislike the current state of the ecosystem. And so I want to come from this place where I'm just looking down into the abyss and being like, oh, that's high, to this where I'm like, can look at the whole nice architecture of this building. That's uh, actually a tower that I visited um, last weekend. It's a 40 meters high tower built only out of wood and some metal uh, nearby the Zurich airport. If you um, if you have the chance to come there, test go there. It's a really, really cool uh, tower. It's cool to use it here in the presentation. So how can we test? Because like there, of course we could do some unit tests, but um, automated tests are better because I think like when, when you're doing unit tests, you're always missing things. So um, what I introduced was the concept of a late oracle. So essentially in the, at the bottom we we have to have some truth and our truth is we have instrumentation we we create an instrumentation based profile because this is like ground truth the java application really executed these lines and then we know um because we're like inserting it as, as shown before and then we know uh, we can use this to verify that get stack trace is correct and then we can use this to ask whether us in get stack trace is correct as a safe point because get stack trace is only valid as a safe point and then we can on top just check whether us in get call trace is correct i implemented this and uh, found some interesting cases turns out get stack trace and us in get stack trace are pretty safe and pretty and pretty accurate just that any change in the open JDK that we're doing might change this and might even prick the API. So the API might not work on your own system and that's pretty terrible. So then there's also the approach um, that I found a few bugs with is fuzzing. So what I did, I just threw, uh, when, when considering the memory space, I just picked two random memory addresses um, in the application, and then I called us and gets, and then I called us and gets trace with it. So the idea is, I'm just throwing it random data to it and hope that it doesn't crash, and it works. I, I run it a long time and it didn't crash, and that's cool. So I'm really testing it so it doesn't crash, so people can use it as a um, bedrock for their own applications. And to deal with these kinds of issues, I invented an experimentation technique that is still. Uh, sneakily from uh, life sciences. So essentially what we're doing is a profiling loop. So in the beginning we have um, our mental model. For example, in my application in the beginning, I have the mental model, okay, this is the application, it passed some JSON, I know some, some information on it. So I know how it works, kind of. Um, and then I make the hypothesis. In my case, the application is slow because I'm passing a lot of JSON. That might be the case. And, and then I adapt the model as so long till I can really express my hypothesis. And then I go further to the evaluation when I have a working hypothesis. And I evaluate. I check whether it's, it's really the, the passing JSON. For example, I use a profile and I saw, yeah, it is. Um, and if I know this, I can, back to, I can go back to the hypothesis, refine it, or even go back to the model if I learned something new about the, model, uh, about the model. So in the end, I want you to, to know that profiles are great. They People doing lots of cool work in this area. 
but just don't trust them too much. So they just suffer, use them when ready, but accept that they might sometimes, ha might sometimes have bugs. And if you find them, please um, write to your fellow OpenJDK developer or add a bug report. Um, and it's just open source. Many of these tools, essentially the underlying APIs are too. Um, so I'm a part of Nerd on Twitter. I'm part of Nerd on GitHub. There you can find me. You can read thrice a week, a uh, every two weeks, a blog post on these topics where I go down rabbit hole. And so my team at is, is at Sweet Submachine. So that's, that was my talk. And thanks for being here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Yes. There's one. Um, in terms of the uh, OpenJDK, are there problems with other languages? Because, like, for example, is the stack traced or the flame graph still as readable as if you're just profiling Java as compared to Kotlin or Scala or whatever? Mm. Yes, with Kotlin, yes, it's as readable because Kotlin is a tiny gem across Java, essentially. With Scala, of course, you have a lot of things that Scala has to Scala has to go through a lot of hoops to get to the language that it is, and so the bytecode is more complicated, but profiler developers that work like on the profiling UIs can mitigate this. They can extract, can extract usually all the information if they properly support Scala. It's far harder, of course, because um, the mapping from, uh, from bytecode to Scala code is far harder in Scala than in Java. Um, because Scala introduces lots of new functions, lots of new frames, but I think it's still feasible. But in the end, profiling Scala code isn't really the point. I thought that Scala was only used for the parts where performance didn't matter. <laughs> Otherwise, you use good old low-level Java code. Other questions? None. Do you Thank you really much. Do you want some, if, if someone wants some stickers? Stickers, stickers. So have a nice day and have a nice week. Please, another round of applause. <laughs>